Hi friends, welcome to Palmenology Read Aloud. Thank you for the support, the encouragement, the feedback, the messages. And today, to honor one of the messages that I have been receiving repeatedly regarding inclusion of newer TB diagnostics, I'm here with a very short video on molecular diagnostic tests for TB. This video is aimed at clarifying the doubts in the terminology, the equipment that is used, the technology that is used and where it can help us. So let's get started. So let's start with gene expert or CBNAT or expert MTBRIF as we call it. Gene expert test is basically a CBNAT test. It is a cartridge based nucleic acid amplification test. What it means is that it is a test which amplifies the nucleic acid or DNA of MTB and how it does it is based on one cartridge where the sample is inserted. So it is a very fast automated test which gives us a qualitative uh, result as to whether MTB is detected or not detected and it's a real-time rapid molecular test based on PCR. So the primary purpose of doing CBNAT is to detect number one whether it's MTB Two is to detect whether there is rifampicin resistance. So it has to be made very clear that GeneXpert or CBNAD does not detect INH resistance. It just talks about rifampicin resistance. It is recommended by WHO. It is recommended by National TB Elimination Program as you may know it. And it is routinely done for both adults and children. It's a very quick test. And if you are not requiring any processing of the sample and you take a direct sputum specimen in two hours or rather one hour 45 minutes, the machine automatically gives us the result. How specific and how sensitive is this test? Well, for sputum, it is highly sensitive and highly specific. So it rules out true negatives, true positives with good ease, with a 99% specificity of ruling out true negatives. Now, in terms of other extrapulmonary samples, it has a fairly good sensitivity and specificity for lymph nodes. Uh, for CSF also very good specificity and for pleural fluid remember that the sensitivity is only 46% that means the ability to find a truly positive pleural fluid sample for TB or say that pleural fluid is positive for TB that is only 46% but the specificity to rule out a negative sample is 99%. So if, if the gene expert test comes out negative, you may actually have had not isolated MTB DNA in the pleural fluid. And then you have to take that clinically forward and see whether it does match your case of being a TB patient or not. So having said that, it is a good diagnostic test. What are the samples processed by CBNAD? This is a huge confusion, especially amongst practitioners who have to send samples and they don't know whether they can send this sample for uh, CBNAD testing or not. So just remember that blood and stool are two samples that really cannot be processed by the machine. Other than that, you can send all samples of your biopsy material, which is homogenized, processed, crushed and prepared along with the body fluids. So you can send a lymph node aspirate, you can send a cytic fluid, pleural fluid, pleural biopsy material, uh, you can send a CSF, you can send the bone and joint synovial fluid, urine as well as the biopsy material, which is then processed into sampling genitourinary tract material that all can be sent some needs processing some can be entered directly into the machine and we will get a result in two hours who will undergo a gene expert 
or CBNAT testing according to the Indian National TB Elimination Program. Well, now everybody should have access to this testing. That means all presumed patients where you feel it may be TB and you want to, you're suspecting, you're presuming that TB is the diagnosis, you would want to do this test and confirm. All notified patients will undergo the diagnostic test so that at least rifampicin resistance is ruled out at the outset. All non-responders will undergo the test where we are suspecting that there is some sort of resistance and extra pulmonary samples because they have very positive acillary load. You may get a negative smear on them. They have to be sent for gene expert. So send those samples. Also for patients who are contact or drug resistant TB patients, you want to rule out in the first go whether rifampicin may be resistant in this patient and definitely patients where the smear sample is negative, was inconclusive or your x-ray was suggestive, your radiology was suggestive of TB but the smear turned out negative, you should want, you would want to undo the gene expert testing. What does it work on? The basic principle, we know now it's a PCR based test. So what it does is it isolates the DNA sequence. It detects the DNA sequence of MTB complex. It also detects the resistant gene of rifampicin. So what it does it is concentrates the bacteria, the bacilli from the sample. It isolates the DNA out of it, the genomic material, and then it subsequently amplifies it and reads it with PCR probes. It also detects rifampicin resistance um, using the RPOB gene. So, um, so it detects the resistance using the RPOB gene. So I'll just write it here, RPOB. So through mutation in the RPOB gene, uh, it can detect rifampicin resistance and it also uh, is a very important test for diagnosis but something that you must take home from this slide today is that even a patient who's undergone treatment, he's recovering, he has dead bacilli, will have a gene expert positive because it's just working on the DNA. It doesn't detect an active uh, DNA versus a killed bacillus DNA. So do not use this test for follow-ups. And it has a good limit of detection of 130 colony forming unit in an ml. So what does the system include? It includes this system which has these modules uh, wherein this cartridge can be inserted. A barcode scanner is used to put up the data in the computer. It's connected to a laptop and this self-contained unit will then do all the testing. Now the models come in uh, numbers. So if it's a GX1 model, module, it will just have one single cartridge loading. If it's two, then it will have two cartridge loading system. If it's four, it'll have four. If it's 64, it'll have 64. So this is how the um, models of the machine are named. How does it interpret the test? It's a qualitative test. It looks at this cycling threshold, the threshold cycle. How many cycles it takes to detect the DNA? If it's less than 16, then the report is termed as high. 16 to 22 medium, less than 28 is low and very low is more than 28. So in that case, it says MTB detected very low. It took more than 28 cycles to detect MTB. MTB detected high, it took only less than 16 cycles to detect MTB. So bacterial load should be low or high accordingly. And it mentions rifampicin resistance only as detected, not detected. There is no high or low in rifampicin resistance report. This is how the whole system looks like. This is the module, this is the machine, this is the cartridge, there is a reagent. So 2 is to 1 ratio, the reagent is mixed into the sputum sample or the sample or the bowel fluid sample, the sample being processed. It's then entered into the cartridge. Now once the cartridge is entered here, all the cleaning, filtering, washing, processing is done inside the machine. So really there is no exposure of the healthcare worker. And then in here itself, it would uh, lyse the DNA, it will capture the DNA, it will amplify using semi uh, nested real-time PCR it will detect and everything will be visible on the computer screen and it will show whether MTB is detected, not detected, rifampicin detected, not detected. 
there's another terminology that's often confused and it's called true nat so is is gene expert or cb nat same as true nat well there are two different machines there are two different companies and uh, there is a slight difference in technology but what they are doing is almost the same so true nat is also a rapid molecular test platform but how it differs is that it uses pcr technology which is built into micro pcr chips so this one uses pcr chips and not cartridges and it also detects tb as well as rifampicin resistance it is being used in our national tv program also something good about it is it it is portable it doesn't require a big system it doesn't require um, a proper setup and you can use it for almost all samples so uh, the two samples that we excluded in uh, gene expert the true nat claims to also process them how it works is there is a workstation there are two devices one will take out the dna and the other will amplify it and there will be reagent kits which will prepare the sample so this is what it looks like i've taken it from their website so um, this is the universal sample prep system and you see uh, sputum serum swab peritoneal fluid bowel fluid tissue blood saliva plasma csf pus pleural fluid lymph node aspirate everything can be entered here and then it will extract the nucleic acid once the nucleic acid is extracted then the true lab system will amplify the dna and we will get a result so this is what true nat is so basically it's just the differences cartridge versus pcr microchip Let's go to some questions that are often asked by examiners. So under the National TB Elimination Program, where do we offer CBNAT up front? So even before microscopy is done, you can offer CBNAT to which of these? One, people living with HIV, pediatric presumptive TB, presumptive drug-resistant TB, or all of the above. So here, basically, all of these may have a lesser load of bacteria and in presumptive drug resistant TB, you want to know upfront whether rifampicin resistance may be there so that you know whether you should be suspecting MDR or not. So the answer here will be all of the above. In all of the above, you can upfront send them for a CBNAT. Question number two is that do we require processing of sputum samples before testing? So the answer here is falls you can directly give the sputum sample and it can be processed by the machine although in certain cases we may require processing and decontamination which takes extra time so the turnaround time of the um, report will be more and again in terms of tissue samples or lymph node aspirates you may require some concentration methods so that will increase the turnaround time but sputum can really be inoculated directly into the machine now coming to the third confusing terminology which is line probe assay. So line probe assay is also a molecular test. How is it different from the gene expert or CBNAT test? So now the first of all the technology that it uses is different. So line probe assay uses reverse hybridization DNA strip technology and gene expert uses semi nested real time PCR technology. So that way it's different. Two, there are two kinds of LPA or line probe assay available. One, as you may have heard, is Haynes test and two is the Nipro test. Now, um, the Nipro is from Japan and Haynes is from Germany. So one way is that way it is different. And what they do is they also detect MDR. So, so why a line probe assay is faring better than a gene expert in a sense is because it can detect multi-drug resistant TB and if it is detecting multi-drug resistant TB it means that it detects resistance not only to INH but rifampicin also so both INH and rifampicin resistance can be detected using this test so this is how it not only detects the MTB complex it also detects INH and rifampicin resistance now again you can directly use the specimen in this machine you can also use the culture isolates uh, of smear negative samples 
and the turnaround time if you use sputum is 72 hours many a time when you will ask a private lab for lpa they would say that if the sample is positive then only we will be able to process it so that's right so once once they detect mtb then it is processed further so for cultures they wait until the culture turns positive there's also a second line mtb dr sl lpa now available which is second line lpa that can detect resistance to high dose iron edge fluoroquinolone um, ethionamide cyclosine so it it can uh, linozolate so this is the second line mtb dr lpa so first line will detect iron edge of Amson and the second line will detect the rest of the second line agent so that's how lpa differs so this is the MTBDR plus or the Haynes test as we commonly call it. What it does it, it extracts DNA from the sample, isolates it, amplifies it and by specific DNA strip technology which is a patented technology where reverse hybridization is used, it amplifies the nucleic acids and detects specific DNA probes uh, which are bound and they detect specific mutation and this helps us identify the drug resistance. Another terminology which we commonly hear is called expert ultra. So we've heard of expert MTB RIF and we've heard of MTB RIF ultra. So what is this RIF ultra? RIF ultra detects MTB complex just like MTB RIF or Gene Expert. What it does is it detects rifampicin resistance for MDRTB and it uses multi copy targets. So it not just only uses RPOB but it also uses multi copy targets. And um, what they are is the, it basically short pieces of DNA uh, are, are targeted and multiple times in the DNA. Uh, genome they they target those dnas and then they are able to identify resistance patterns so it targets the is6110 and is1081 sequence it also differs in its resistance detection so this is a nested pcr and it has four probes which bind to rpob gene almost similar sample uh, is needed and the turnaround time is lesser here and the limit of detection also therefore goes much slow so for patients who may turn out negative in mtb rif mtb ultra may be able to detect more of them so essentially what expert mtb rif ultra is doing is it is giving more chances of the probe to attach and detect the RPOB gene mutation and the MTB DNA. So if less than two probes come out positive, we know that the MTB is trace and if more than two RPO probes are coming out positive, we know that it is significant. So hence, basically it can give a result of trace, very low, low, medium and in that sense it is um, better, fares better than MTB RIF but essentially does that correlate clinically? A lot of studies have concluded that there may not be significant difference. However, you can detect very trace amounts of MTB also with ultra. Now coming to uh, a few WHO recommendations and concluding this topic today, um, it has to be remembered that uh, expert MTB RIF is now preferred for extrapulmonary samples such as CSF sample, such as lymph node sample and extrapulmonary tissues. But yes, we would not want to use it in uh, blood and stool and in urine in some cases again we can still use it. Also remember that for lymph nodes and extrapulmonary tissues that you're using, sometimes it may be uh, positive and you may replace it with routine microscopy and culture uh, and you can have a quicker diagnostic yield. So um, CBNAT or expert MTB RIF is really important for such clinical decisions. One special mention about CSF, um, we must preferably use expert MTB RIF over cultures if your volume of CSF that you've collected is low and you don't have additional samples. Obviously, if you have more samples, you must also do the MTB culture. Remember that uh, whenever you have xanthogromic or blood stain uh, fluid, you must first uh, centrifuge it, concentrate it. Similarly, when you're doing uh, any testing for presumed extrapulmonary TB, and single 
test for expert MTB turns out negative, but you are presuming TB in that patient, please do not stop there. Go for more additional diagnostic testing. Choose another test. Because remember, just as I said, for pleural fluid, um, the sensitivity to find out true positives is only 48%. So that means not all positives will be detected. And um, so you must probably do a biopsy or uh, you must further test this patient because you may not get all of them positive. The specificity is good, but the sensitivity may be only 48%. So this concludes my talk for today. I hope you enjoyed uh, this small video. Uh, this was too much in brief, uh, uh, just a refresher so that you're clear with the terminology. And happy reading. Please subscribe, like, and share this channel. See you again. Bye-bye.